Iniciamos la tercera entrevista del CAICAM 2016, de hecho la tercera entrevista del segundo día. Estamos con León Williams, que es el CEO de BTC, el operador de Bahamas. Con él vamos a estar hablando sobre la presentación que él hizo ayer. Él está siendo el chairman de esta conferencia de CARICAM y además hizo una presentación en el día de ayer para la audiencia. Vamos a intentar explorarla para entender qué quiso comunicarles a los asistentes de este congreso. León, once again, welcome to Telesman.com. It's good to be here. It's a, it's a pleasure having you here. So yesterday you had a presentation. You are chairing this congress, so obviously you have a, a role here, a very important role to play. But also you had a presentation yesterday. Why don't you tell us what you tried to communicate to the audience, and why do you think your message was important for the audience uh, who is participating in this event? Uh, yesterday, um, the, the topic really had to do with network reliability, resiliency of the network. Uh, for the panel, and so my introduction to the conference is to talk, give an overview of the Bahamas. Okay. And um, the Bahamas is just 60 miles off the United States, goes all the way down to Hispaniola. It covers 100,000 kilometers of the Atlantic Ocean. 700 islands, rocks, and keys. In those 700 islands, uh, populated by just 350,000. But to serve those 700 islands, Um, the number one economy um, sector of the economy is tourism. So there's 6.5 million tourists coming in. Those tourists every year. Every year, those tourists come in from different countries with different technologies, whether it's CDMA, GSM, um, 2G, 3G, uh, 4G, LTE. The B BTC, which is the company that I'm CEO, has to provide all those technologies so that those persons coming in could roam. Okay. In addition to that, uh, to support the tourism industry, there's 516 hotels, motels and cottages with some 15,000 hotel rooms that is available, spread over the 700 islands, rocks and keys. We have a submarine cable that connect inter-island, uh, submarine, five optic submarine that interconnect the islands. And then up and down the, the length and breadth of the islands, there's five optic submarines. So that cable, um, so that the cell sites that provides the cellular services could be connected back to the hub in New Providence. To maintain and give the reliability, uh, you have to understand that on every island there's a gen set. There is no backhaul of electricity which makes it very difficult to provide reliable 3949 services. But because the government is dependent upon the network uh, for CCTV cameras, for angular bracelets, for mobile data, and because ICT is so important in the development of the country, it is like the, 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 that nets the country together. Uh, and so I was trying to give an overall by showing pictures of the development. The government, for example, over the last 18 months has approved $4.6 billion worth of capital investments. In telecom? For, in, into, in the, in, into the country, totally okay. for, for, for the country. Um, for example, the, the, the Point Hotel is an investment of $140 million. Um, Bimini Resorts just um, created a brand new Hilton Hotel earlier this year there's an investment of almost $500 million. And then the government is also into sports as an economy. So we host FIFA, we'll be hosting the PGA tournament in one of the islands at Sandals in the Exumas on the first week of January. Then on the third week of January, it'll be at Winding Bay Abaco. Because the PGA is there, it means that the Gulf Channel wants to be able to broadcast um, the tournament live. Um, there's the Commonwealth Games where 80 nations will be coming in. There, there is um, FIFA beach soccer mm -hmm. that will be coming into the Bahamas. The Bahamas also host the, the IWF World Relays. And we are the only country outside the continental United States where American college football bowl is being held. And so I was trying to show the challenges of being able to provide reliable telecommunication services in a multi-island nation. Right. Now, but, but given, it seems that the infrastructure has improved quite a bit in the Caribbean, at least in Bahamas, as you have the cables, I'm assuming you have LTE as well, uh, and 3G. What are the next steps in terms of build out of infrastructure in the Caribbean? What's, what's next? For the, for the Bahamas, uh, we've got... For the Bahamas, yes. For the Bahamas, we've got 
five submarine fiber optic cables connecting us through to the United States. Yeah. And then there's a Diakos cable that comes in, um, landing three islands in the Bahamas, going down to Turks and Caicos, Dominican, and going through 14 islands in Latin and South America, and all the way back to um, the United States. So there's not a difficulty of offshore bandwidth. That's not a challenge at all for the Bahamas. Internally, as I stated earlier, there's the Bahamas domestic submarine cable that connects all 14 of the major islands. Uh, the challenge for us, for example, again, in terms of reliability, is that there are 53 airports in the Bahamas. Okay. 30 of those airports are owned by the government. American Airlines flies from Miami into Nassau, it flies into Abaco, it flies into Grand Bahama, it flies into Eleuthera, Exuma, and down into San Salvador. So just being able to provide communication to maintain the security and safety and the operations of the 53 airports is a challenge alone. Certainly we've got ubiquitous 4G in the Bahamas. Um, all the islands are covered by LTE mm -hmm. and we've got LTE roaming. So my company has LTE roaming with AT&T uh, Canadian companies as well. So the 6.5 million tours that come into the Bahamas could have a seamless network experience. presence experience when they leave their home network, AT&T, or Rogers in Canada, or any of the other major carriers and come to the Bahamas. Okay, Jose Otero was telling us yesterday that one of the issues that applies to all the Caribbean, but I think also the Bahamas, is that the roaming prices have gone down quite a bit in the last five years. And it used to be a very big business for the operators, and that's becoming also a challenge for for the operators in the Caribbean. How do you see the roaming uh, business going in the future? Or, or what's, what's the future of the roaming business for the Caribbean? I, I, I think we have, to, we have to change, and we are in the process of the operators changing their business model. Um, 10, 15 years ago, long distance was the number one product. Um, in 1999, for example, my company, long distance revenues was $121 million. Today, long distance revenues is almost obsolete. Two million, three million dollars. Uh, after that, um, we introduced mobile services, cellular services, and then roaming. Um, and then we got the voice traffic. The challenge, however, is the OTT operators okay. um, has, has come in, and so people have got an alternative. Um, so it has affected our long distance, it has affected the roaming revenues, messaging. and it is a messaging, text messaging, as well as voice. Um, so most folks coming in will go to, the tourists coming in will go to a Dunkin' Donuts, Want to try a wi -Fi. Starbucks, try to find Wi-Fi yeah. and doing the Wi-Fi offload. So they, they are, we, we have to be very creative in, within the Caribbean and find out how, what are the new sources of revenue, what are the new revenue streams, which means the infrastructure has to change. And certainly what we are doing now, for my company in particular, mm -hmm. is to find a glide path to 5G. Okay. Um, the, and to start to introduce the Internet of Things. Okay, now, uh, do, you, do you see the OTTs as competitors or at some point they can become partners? And if so, how? Certainly the OTT is what I refer to as the virtual competitor, but there is absolutely nothing that I can do about it. Okay. Uh, the regulator is not going to regulate. The regulator can't tax. Uh, the OTT operator has no investment infra infrastructure, pays no taxes, has no employees <laughs> uh, in country. And, it's when too good to be and when there's something, when something does go wrong with someone what's up, they call me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something you have to live with. So I have a simple philosophy is, is this. Uh, my approach is if the guy your neighbor does not want to give you a ride in his car, then go buy your own car. Sure. <laughs> Stop sweating and uh, wasting energy trying to figure out if not, why not, shoulda, coulda, had a. My simple philosophy is let's go out and be innovative and creative and see how we could talk to our customers, listen to our customers, see what their needs are, and provide solutions to those needs. Okay, Julian from Digicel, who was before you here in the interview, uh, he mentioned that all the operators in the Caribbean have agreed not to block OTTs and try to find a way by which, instead of regulating OTTs, we should deregulate operators, so reduce the number of responsibilities you may have. Yeah, Do yeah. you agree with your vision? Yeah, yeah years ago, uh, when voice over IP first came out, a lot of Caribbean countries um, blocked voice yeah. over IP. Uh, 
that that's not the way to go. And and Doesn't the work. regulators and the legislators, the politicians, will not allow you to do it anyway. So it that that's not something that you must lose night rest over. So I agree with Julian. Uh, we will we will not block um, the OTTs. No. Okay. Um, and moving forward, I think we sign a memorandum of understanding as well um, that we will embrace. Uh, a semblance of net neutrality. But you would like to see your regulation, the one that applies to you, to be more deregulated, so as an operator you perhaps may have lesser responsibilities, as, as, as even taxa as, less taxation? As, as, as an as operator, I, I think um, I would like to see where the playing field is, is level. level, but life is not fair, so let, let's, I wouldn't waste time on it. Um, and certainly that there will be light touch regulation as opposed to some of the owner's requirements. For example, in the Bahamas, the requirement by the regulator for my company, BTC, is that I must provide as a service obligation telecommunications to any rock island key or settlement that has 10 or more households. Yeah. I mean, it has nothing to do with cost. It is all about the provision of the service. Yeah. Um, and so the new entrant does not have that obligation but I have that um, service obligation. obligation. Yeah. Okay. And so the, the regulation has to be a little more flexible and light touch and come up to the 21st century. Excellent. All right, Leon, we're going to leave it here. Okay. Once again, one more year, thank you for being here with us and, and discussing some of the issues that we're seeing in the Caribbean, which is always fascinating because, yeah. as you were saying, you guys have to connect so many islands and right. it's, it's not easy. So right. thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the interview. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.